I just had this uh, bad feeling that I was on mute for the past 90 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I hope not. I'll check it once it's it's uploaded. Yes. Yeah. It'll be well. Maybe uh, can you turn your uh, volume? I'm hearing an echo from somebody. I think it's. Do you, do you have a speakers? You're using headphones. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not on speakers. It's yeah. maybe Davidson is in his. He's in the same room as you, right? Maybe that's yeah. why. Hey, David, David, can you close that door? Okay. Okay, we'll just cope. We'll cope with it. Um, which data set are we using today? Because I, I was trying to unzip them all, but the cats and dogs one is taking forever. So I'm not sure if that's yeah. going to be ready in time. Yes, yeah, sorry. But... <laughs> oh, no, no, it's fine. Just just wondering. Do we need that today? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, right now we've been using the uh, numbers, which is built in to Kera, so you don't need it. Is is that the MNIST? Yeah, MNIST, okay. yeah. But, um, um, yeah, I, sh I should have told you, tried to... Uh, there's like a twenty thousand or something. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> too much data, but that's okay. You you can just follow along and uh, I'll just have it running in the background. Yeah, it it it's so much data that it's impossible to um, to you know in a classroom setting. Mm. Um, but uh, we'll we'll just um, I'll plow just ahead that. here. So um, I don't know if you uh. We're able to join the last. You just joined now, right? Yeah, I jo I joined. I think okay. just after you guys closed down the first one. I was here at like ten, seventeen, or eighteen. So I think just just a bit late. Okay, let me. Um, I'll share my screen here. Hopefully, this will work. Yep. So um, try again. This big lens. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'll, uh, I'm not going to go back and start over this morning's lecture because we have it recorded. So, um, but what I wanted to do was, um, number three here. So hopefully uh, for number three, can, you can open this and, um, oh, I remember this is, I, I didn't want, I should, oh, I remember, oh, predict, that's right, okay, number four here. So number three uh, made a list of all the uh, misses. So if, um, if you look under numbers and miss this folder, misses, it has um, examples, everything that it, it missed. Okay, so some of, some of them, for example, this, this one here is kind of small, but um, it looks like it's supposed to be a five, but I cannot blame the computer for missing <laughs> that. So anyway, um, the next example is, um, Number four here, predict, which is um, this is going to load a sample image, and uh, it's going to pass. Try to predict one image. Okay, so um, you should see here the sample image looks like this. Okay, so let's um, fighter. We can just run this, see if it works. Okay, so it guessed a seven, so that looks good. And you can see uh, the uh, predict value here actually outputs a, a, um, a vector with uh, 10 values. And if you count, they're all uh, very small. So it goes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here, uh, number seven was 100%. So it's very confident that th this is a seven. Okay. 
So that looks good. What about sample two here? Okay, so let's just try this number. If we change in our source code, um, sample Samples. two, image two, sample image two, mm. and you can see it guessed, guessed wrong. Two, it thinks it's a two. So uh, one thing uh, you can see wrong with this image is that it's a white on black instead of black on white. Or actually this is black on white, but we trained, it's like it's a negative image. Okay, so you have to be careful when uh, input to the network. How about uh, number three? Okay, so there I corrected the uh, white on black. So if we make this a three here, what does it do? Nine, okay. Well, that's AI for you. Sometimes it gets it wrong. So there are a lot of um, um, issues. I think the problem now, um, Actually, I'll go back to uh, this previous. Okay, I think the problem now is that it's not centered correctly. So um, if you're really ambitious for a homework assignment, you, there's, um, there are algorithms for, um, they're called um, blob detection and uh, try to make a bounding box around the interesting parts of this, are there also, uh, the, the M, I think the MNIST, it's modified NIST. And I think what they modified is that they uh, they normalized all the uh, sample data so that it's um, centered correctly. We see this image is not very well centered, which, um, so if you uh, want a homework assignment, you can, explore um, centering algorithms. And then finally, number four, what was number four? Yeah, this is just, this is one pixel. I think it was just one pixel wide. What does this do? It got right. Okay. So that makes me feel better. At least it got one. Sometimes it gets it correct. Um, before we go on, I wanted to go back to um, number two here, train. And uh, down at the bottom here, it says a train test. I want to um, go to train final. Okay, so, so um, once we have our model, um, we think we have the best possible hyperparameters, then we want to train the final. So you see a um, train test up here, it does it in five, um, they call folds. So it trains the network five times and each time it holds back uh, one fifth of the data for, a, for, a train, for testing. And uh, and then uh, um, it gives you statistics, okay. But when we're finished, we we we're done. Uh, uh, we have the best. We know we have the best possible model. Then we want to train the final version, okay. But uh, I, I want to change. I want to change this verbose to one here, so we can see it. And I want to show you the effect of a batch size. So if I just run this the way it is now, 30, batch size is now 32. Okay, so this works, but you see this uh, 19, the epochs, we have 10 epochs, it's easy to understand. But what does this 19 mean? 19 means that, we, remember we, we had uh, 600 input images, 
Actually, we have 60,000, but we divided that by 100. Why are you blinking? Um, okay, so if, we, if you divide uh, um, 600 by 32, you should get something like a 19. But I, I forget what they call this, uh, steps or something. So um, so batch size 32 means, um, if we go back to our lecture this morning, remember this uh, feed forward and back propagation. Okay. So if we have a batch size of 32, it means it, it will uh, feed forward uh, 32 times and accumulate the result, kind of compute an average result. Okay, and then it will do back prop one time. Okay, so the advantage of that is that it speeds up, it's, it speeds up the training and also uh, makes it uh, more stable. Instead of uh, um, doing back prop on every uh, input image, so I, I want to uh, show you, uh, if I make this a one here now, and I go, it'll still do 10 epics, but you see this This is now going up to 600. Okay, that, this is because it's uh, feed forward uh, one image and then a uh, back prop. Okay, so it has to do a uh, back prop 600 times per epic. You see it's, it's running much slower now. Okay. So the, uh, the batch size, um, in general, in a perfect world, we would always use a batch size of one because that will give the best result. But in real life, we don't, we don't have a days and weeks to wait for the training to finish. So you, um, so in general, try to keep the batch size uh, small. Okay, 32, we, batch size of 32 on an input of only 600. 32 was intended for uh, 60,000, okay? It makes sense, but we, we, uh, we only have 600. So batch size, I would say, uh, you know, maybe in this case, you know, maybe 10 or eight or whatever, or one, I get the best result. Um, the one thing, for some reason, the accuracy, you see the accuracy is not going up, okay? It's staying, not work, it's not training correctly. That went up. Um, I think it's because this is the final, I think um, this accuracy is uh, meaningless when we train the final because we don't have any uh, validation data. Okay, so so that's why uh, he had this as zero here, I think. So anyway, um, there was something else I wanted to discuss before we move on. What was it? Hey, we did this. So we talked about uh, k-fold cross validation. So if um, if you're going to uh, publish in a paper, uh, you don't want to just say, "Oh, I, I ran this and it gave me a 98% accuracy." The, if the reviewer uh, is uh, careful, then he will say, "Okay, but." how many times did you run that and what was the mean and standard deviation? Okay, so that's why we do this uh, K-fold. So usually you have five folds, uh, sometimes 10, okay? But uh, it means that you have to uh, train your data uh, 10 times. So, so uh, how can we improve? Um, one thing uh, is a pixel scaling. So if you recall, um, we scaled our pixel values like this. Okay, the original values were a zero to 255 and uh, re 
this is the original values here and we rescaled them. So now they're zero to one. Okay, but another another method is uh, to make uh, 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 a 128, make that zero. Make zero is minus um, 0 0.5 and a one or a two for two. So, so they're centered on a zero. In, lots of, in general, when you're doing AI, you want your data, the mean is zero and a standard deviation of one. So that's easier to train. Okay, but they, that's not like a, it's not like a golden rule. You don't have to do that, but at least uh, try. It's much uh, simpler to just uh, scale from zero to one. Okay, so usually for um, images, if you're if you're training images, you see uh, scaling like this. But he he uh, that's what he's saying down here. Try scaling, different scaling methods. Okay. The other one, the learning rate. So. Um, I mentioned the Adam um, optimization. The other one is his, he uses SGD here. Okay. So this stands for stochiastic gradient descent. Okay. So um, Adam, usually he, he just uh, uses the default value. And I, and I think Adam will uh, uh, kind of, um, how do you say, uh, um, a, a stands for, um, I think it stands for adjust or something, I forgot. Anyway, um, usually with Adam, you don't, you just use the default values and it works. The SGD, usually you see them, they, you know, there are default values. I think the default is, is this 0 0.01 and 0 0.9. Okay, but um, if uh, you want, you try, try, in general, uh, uh, try, for example, multiply by 10 to 0.1, and maybe momentum, try that 0.99. Okay, you can experiment uh, different values. But this is called the optimizer parameters. Sometimes you can get the similar result faster. You see this accuracy will go up and the uh, loss function will go down faster. That's what we want. Okay. Excuse me. And the tune the model depth. So uh, here you can see um, the base model had a one layer of a convolution 2D with max pooling. So this is kind of a base the simplest possible convolutional neural network. Okay. But here we the deep models. So when they talk about deep learning, this is what they mean. They're adding more layers here. Okay. So here we have actually added two more layers of uh, convolution networks. And we still have one uh, dense layer. Okay, sometimes you'll see uh, uh, two. Sometimes you'll see like this. Um, okay, maybe. Um, so this is what they call a hyperparameter. What, sh what should this be? Just uh, try something. Hyperparameters, uh, you can only uh, try and experiment. Okay, but the final the final layer in the model is a ten, because uh, we have ten digits. We have ten fingers, we have ten toes, we have ten digits. So that is decided. We never change this, and we use softmax because this is a uh, what they call a categorical, a multi uh, category. It's not a binary classification. It's a multi uh, class. So if you have three or more uh, classes, then uh, we use softmax for activation on the final layer. And we use uh, categorical cross 
entropy for the loss. If you recall, uh, uh, yesterday we had we were we were had a yes no question. Do, does the patient have diabetes? Yes or no? So that's what is called a binary binary uh, cross entropy for the loss. And for the activation, we had um, what did we have? I forgot. Ah. Uh, not epsilon, but um, sigmoid, sigmoid. Okay, so you just have to remember these uh, funny sounding words. <laughs> but if you have a binary, the last, this would be a, a one. Okay, we have one value sigmoid. and the activa activation is sigmoid. sigmoid. Yeah. Okay. And then ReLU, as you remember, is similar to sigmoid, sigmoid. but it's a, Easy to compute. It's like a shortcut version of uh, sigmoid. Okay, so those, and then uh, finally, uh, if if the uh, problem is um, regression, so for example, you want to train a network to tell you the price of the stock tomorrow. Okay, then that that outputs a one value. So this, the final error would be one with no activation, okay, it just outputs a number. Okay, so it might be a, a, in dollars, how much the stock will be worth uh, tomorrow. Or um, this, if the example we had was the Boston uh, housing. So if, if you know the, um, the size of the house and the neighborhood that it's in, you can predict how much the house will sell for. So a, a um, what do you call it, a real estate agent might be interested in that kind of a system to help them estimate how much a house is worth. Okay. So do you have any questions? No questions. Any questions that I am actually able to answer? So this I uh, mentioned uh, uh, this morning. If you're interested in um, learning some more of the theory, especially he has a long discussion of this um, gradient descent, and he develops this uh, numerical um, uh, classification just Go away. Go away. Using only a Python, not using any um, KEDIS or a PyTorch. Okay. What was this one? Oh, yeah. If you, you can download the uh, source code for there. So, anyway, um, I want to talk a little bit more about the learning curves. So uh, we've already seen um, the loss. In general, this, this is a good, what the loss function should look like. In general, the, the loss, you think of this as like uh, uh, how far the distance from the, from the correct answer. And there are many different um, loss functions. Okay, here we're using this, um, what are we using? If you go back, um, if we go back, we're using um, categorical cross entropy. Okay, so if you go on the, to the um, documentation, it will explain all kinds of complicated mathematics, what this means, but there are a lot of options. But in general, just think of it, the distance from the uh, correct answer. Okay, so if, here we have training and validation. So remember, um, validation is different from test data, which in uh, validation, we hold back a little bit of the data while we're training, okay? The test data, we hold back through the whole process. We don't use it at all during the training process. Okay, so if we're lucky, our, uh, our learning curve will look something like this. But what happens? What happens if we're not so lucky? So for example, 
you might have something that looks like this. So um, I'm sorry, I have to go back to my notes here. Um, so this is an example of underfitting. Okay, this this means that, um, for example, maybe you you have a very simple model, but you have very uh, difficult, complicated data. Okay, maybe you're trying to uh, classify very difficult um, cell slides, for example. A very difficult problem, but you use a very, very simple uh, model, then you might uh, have something looks like this. The, uh, the, um, you see that especially the validation is not, is not dropping like it should. So this is called uh, underfitting. Okay, well, how about this one? This is, um, this is another underfitting. Okay, you see the curve especially the first uh, 30 epochs here. Okay. Maybe uh, I would say uh, try to increase your uh, learning rate. It seems to me it should, it should drop. It should look like this, look like this shape, kind of shape. But this is, has, looks like this, the loss. But also, um, but it is dropping. So um, we got up to 50 here. So Maybe uh, if we keep going, we should go to 100 or 200. Maybe then it'll be okay. And this is what uh, the, the famous overfitting. So here you can see the um, the training on the training data. It's still going down, but the validation has a uh, has a uh, breached a uh, limit. It's not going down any farther. So this gap. Here is what they call a overfitting. So that means that uh, with with the data that it's using for training, it's doing a, a good job. But when you try to introduce uh, some new uh, data, it it can't uh, it can't they say general generalize. So uh, like I said, uh, try a dropout layers and a data augmentation. So. We'll talk about uh, augmentation in the next section here. Okay, something like this. This is a, the data set is too small. So if you don't have a, enough uh, data for training and validation, you might have a very unstable looking graph like this. Okay. So we need more data or something like this. Um, here, the, the training curve looks good. The blue curve here looks good, but the validation data looks terrible. Okay, so in this case, um, remember, uh, we usually reserve like between 10% and 30% for uh, validation data. So in this case, you may, uh, uh, you may try uh, increasing the percent you know, increase from from ten percent to uh, twenty percent, or even thirty percent. Okay, then uh, maybe you can uh, get a better uh, validation curve here. And finally, this one. What is this? Oh yeah, this is this is like the opposite. Normally, you would see the blue line lower than the orange line. But uh, in this case, um, maybe the validation data is easier to predict. So, so it just depends on your data. Um, for example, if just by uh, chance, if you're classifying digits, you had very good, uh, easy to, to uh, classify digits in your, in your training data, but not so good, or, or, or you know, if, if just by bad luck, okay, sometimes um, um, your uh, validation data is uh, too easy, too easy to predict, okay. But hopefully, if uh, everything goes well, it looks something like this. Okay, any questions on learning curves? Let's see here.
Okay, we're all still, everyone's is still here. I'm not hearing the echo now, so I thought maybe I lost somebody. But if there's no questions, I'll go on. I'll finish uh, numbers here. Let's see. What's that? Let's um Okay, so now we want to go to cats and dogs. Cats and dogs. There it is. So uh, David, is your uh, cats and dogs data finished unzipping? Yep. It's finished, good, okay. So um, open our PowerPoint here. Okay. Okay, so this, um, this is I got from the same um, web page I introduced before. Okay, so this data uh, comes from Kaggle. So Kaggle is they do these kind of competitions. So if you have um, if you want to really test your AI skills, you can join one of these competitions. And uh, I never have any confidence. <laughs> I know I will be lose badly. But anyway, uh, this data was collected by a uh, Kaggle. And uh, it's, it actually comes from ImageNet. So ImageNet is this, um, like the name implies, um, they have millions of these images they've collected with, uh, with labels. The important thing, there's plenty of uh, images on, you can get from Google, but they don't have uh, labels. It's a problem. So for the ImageNet, you can get um, data with labels. So here uh, we had, uh, we downloaded 25,000 photos of cats and dogs. So 12,500 dogs, 12,500 cats. So um, the, the photos have to be reshaped, okay. A square image, and we don't usually we don't worry about the aspect ratio. So some so actually, uh, uh, you would think that we should try to maintain the aspect ratio, and just make the edges black or something. But usually, for um, for the training, we just ignore the aspect ratio. We don't care if it gets stretched a little bit. In general, uh, smaller inputs are faster. Okay, so we'll start off uh, with 200 by 200. So, so before we had uh, uh, hand-drawn images or uh, uh, numbers, we used 28 by 28. Okay, if we try to use uh, 28 by 28, I think it would be impossible to distinguish between a cat and a dog. That's why we use a larger image size here. Okay, so uh, the problem is that it takes uh, 12 gigabytes of RAM to hold the whole uh, data. So we use this, it's called a image data generator, which I'll show you in a minute here. Okay, so this is a little bit slower, but uh, it means that we can have unlimited size of input data and it'll run on any machine, even on a little notebook computer here. Okay, so this is the documentation for the image data generator. So let's, um, right, so the data that you have should be divided into folders like this, cats and dogs and test and train. So let's, um, first of all, let me this one. 
Um, okay, so I think um, I'm gonna forget. I haven't done this in a while. So this was the original data, I think. So you have a uh, 12,500 cats, and then we go down the dogs. Okay. So um, we go to spider here and we open the first cats and dogs. The one is going to be baseline. We can close these other ones for numbers. Okay, so this is the baseline here. So let's go down, put a break point here with the first line, and then um, so you have to be careful. So, so while while I'm thinking, I'll, I'll try to explain. So run when you want to run, you run. But you have to be careful. If you set a breakpoint and hit run, it won't stop at the breakpoint. You have to hit debug. So deep step over, step into, step out of, and uh, this will run the next line and stop. And um, these two buttons here are uh, run the current cell and uh, run the current cell and go to the next one. I never use uh, cells. So I think cells are uh, kind of like in Jupiter, they use us cells a lot, but um, personally, I'm not a fan. Of, but if you're a fan, feel free to run these cells. Also, I wanted to mention um, in preferences here, um, I think that if you've, Evan, if you've installed your, um, Python, um, one thing about this editor is that um, I like to uh, show uh, tabs, show blank spaces. I think default, this is um, off. Okay, but I like to see where my tabs are in, in, um, in Python, the, the tab, tabs have to be correct. Otherwise, it'll give an error message. In C, it doesn't matter if you use tabs or spaces or how many tabs you want to use. It's called a free form. Okay. But in Python, uh, tabs are kind of um, um, important. So I like to show, I like to turn on uh, tabs. Actually, I don't like line numbers. Who needs line numbers, right? And also, um, where was it? Tabs, highlight, where was it? Milliseconds. There's another, um, all right, source code. You go down. Um, this, uh, you want to, I think the default here is spaces. I think the default is four spaces, which will cause an error in Python. So I don't know why, but uh, you have to change, you want to change this to tabs and the tab is four spaces. Okay. So um, be careful with that. And okay. Okay, so um, we can set a breakpoint down here and then hit Debug and not run. Okay. So uh, you can see up at the top, I I printed the uh, TensorFlow version. So sometimes when you're having trouble with different versions, you want to know what version that you're actually using. So I like to uh, print out my versions here. And then we can step into, step into, Okay, the first thing we're gonna prepare our files. Okay, so what this does, it copies. We're gonna step into this. Okay, prepare data. Okay, 
So what this does is uh, looks at this uh, train and test folder, and um, it's going to copy images. Okay, so I should have a train, train and test here. Okay, so train here. I think a train is all the data with 25,000 images. Okay, what we're going to do is copy. We don't want to use all of the data because it takes too long. We want to copy some uh, small uh, subset to the test folder, I think, all right? So this, we're going to do dogs and cats. Okay, the first thing that we'll do is make a new directory, which um, new dir here, data sets, train dogs. Okay, so first thing it's going to remove, if, if this folder exists, it's going to remove it, and then it's going to create it, empty one. So you can go back and check. I think it's in here. We started off, what did we start off? Test, train dogs. Train dogs should now be empty. Train dogs. Okay, this is an empty folder here. Okay, this one is not empty because we haven't done in the cats yet. Okay, so next step, It'll, uh, the new directory is going to be cats. Now we're going to train cats. And you see this remove tree. Remove tree is going to erase everything and ignore any errors. If you leave this, um, if you don't set this ignore, then it'll ask you, do you want to delete this cat? Do you want to delete this cat? Do you want to leave this cat? Delete this cat? Blah, 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 blah. We don't care. We know what we're doing. So if you uh, step over this, then you see the cats is gone. Okay. So the next step, we're going to make a directory with cats. So here's cats. So now we have two empty folders to hold cats and dogs. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing for uh, test, we did train. Now we'll do the same thing. Delete, delete, delete. Okay. Now we're going to um, seed means uh, initialize the random number generator with the current time. So every time we run, we'll we'll get a different set of uh, cats and dogs. Okay. Now this uh, sub ratio here is um, 0 0.01. Okay, so this means that we're going to use one one hundredth of the data. Okay. So if we, this will run, I'll, I'll uh, here I'll use a step out of, okay, so you can just see the result. This will take a second to copy files. That you should see, yeah. So we have 91 dogs or some cats. Here, this is still running. Okay, 100. Okay. Okay, so what that did, it from this folder train, it copied random one about 100 cats and about 100 dogs. Okay, so this is what we're going to use to train. Okay. So where are we now? We finished? Okay. So now we're going to define, so this is, um, we have train, do we have test two? Yeah. For testing, we have 38 cats and 35 dogs. Okay. So it's not, a, it's not probably not enough data to really train the network, but it's enough at least to make sure uh, 
we don't have any bugs in our program. So now we're going to define our model here. So I'll step into, step over. So we always start with sequential. And here we see the same pattern, a convolutional and max pooling, and then flatten, and then a dense, and the final is a dense. Okay, so remember um, now we're we're back to a uh, binary problem: is it cats or dogs? Yes or no? So the final layer is a dense with one value, and the activation is sigmoid, the same that we saw with uh, diabetes. And uh, we use a ReLU here. Okay, so one twenty-eight here is is a a uh, hyperparameter, so maybe this is a good value. Who knows? Just have to try it. Then um, convolution two D. Here we use a, a three by three, uh, and we have thirty two of them. So this is another um, hyperparameter. Do we need? You can try sixty four. You can try one hundred twenty eight. You can try 16. In general, you want to use the smallest number possible to get the best possible result. Okay, so it's a kind of balance. So um, these are hyper parameters. So initialization, just uh, how is it? So uniform, I think it means a, um, between a zero and one, uh, it'll initialize a, um, random numbers. Okay, before we said the input shape is 200 by 200 pixels. And now we have a three for um, RGB color. And we use a max pooling to reduce the size. Okay. So I think, uh, I think these are the default values for learning rate. Okay, so this should all look familiar now. So we compile the model, return, print the summary. So here you can see we're, we're already up to 40 million parameters that we have to train now. So much bigger than what our, um, I forget what this value was for the numbers, but it was much smaller because we have all these uh, convolution um, and plus the input size is much bigger. Before it was 28 by 28 by one. Now we have 200 by 200 by 30 by three. Right. Okay, so that's our model. File names. All right, this is, oh, this just outputs the, um, model to a file, PNG file. So if you go down, uh, if you look back here, um, you should have, um, what's it called? PNG file somewhere here, it is. maybe this is it, right? So this is just a plot of what the model looks like. Okay. Okay, so now um, here's an image, oh, as I was saying, the image data generator. So this is going to, um, here the rescale is, um, is going to, the, the pixel values, it's going to rescale to um, between zero and one, instead of from zero to two, five, five. Okay, so this, uh, to use this, you have to use this, it's called an iterator. So it's kind of confusing, but basically just think of it as uh, it's going to feed uh, images from these folders. Now I only have a 100, but might have uh, thousands. Okay, 100 we could probably hold in memory, but not 25,000. Okay, so this uh, sets up the, 
two iterators, one for training and one for testing. And then we're going to fit. So um, this may take a little while. So I'm going to stop debugging and I'm going to go to run file. Okay, so now it's going to copy new new images at random. Okay, hopefully. Okay, now it's going to start training. It's going to do 20 epochs. Okay. Okay, so the um, this is a uh, actually it's you can see the accuracy is still hovering around fifty percent. Okay, but with our, with a data that we have, it might go up a little bit, but um, with the data that we have, we're only using one hundred uh, cats and one hundred dogs. Okay, so probably not going to go more than 60% or so. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this and uh, go back to my slides here. So um, we are talking about, uh, yeah. So this is a kind of VGG models. So the VGG 16, this is a famous um, um, classification model. So it's Basically the same thing, the 16 means that there's 16 uh, layers in here. Okay, so that's why they call it deep learning. So 16 layers deep. So uh, at the, you see these, um, uh, this is a what they call the, um, what they call it flattened, connecting, and then uh, uh, fully connected layers or dense layers here with um, the final is here they use soft max because they have more than one they're, they have a cars or um, trains or boats. Okay, but we're using um, sigmoid because we have only one uh, plus only uh, one answer a dog or a cat. So VGG 16 is a type of CNN. So it's used for um, classification. So uh, later we'll talk about uh, transfer learning. So transfer learning means that uh, you use this uh, pre-trained convolution uh, uh, layers and you replace uh, the final layer with your own classification. So uh, tr transfer learning is uh, much faster. You don't have to train training such a, a large uh, network from scratch, you, you really need a supercomputer and millions of images, okay? So lots of times uh, if, if you say you're, you have a, you, you want to classify uh, cell uh, slides, your professor gives you, oh, I have all these thousands of images and this is type one and this is type two, then it's, it's usually not a good idea to, to try to train from scratch. Okay, it's better to do, use this uh, transfer learning. Okay, so you use a pre-trained network and only have to train the final layer for your uh, particular classification application. So, okay, so we're going to uh, try more filters here, more layers, more more everything, more padding. Okay, I talked about this before, so I'll skip over these slides. We did talk about the padding. Oh, well, David, you didn't, I don't know, maybe you didn't hear. I don't, yeah, I think I haven't seen that yet, but I've, pretty like, much it's, no. it's yeah. been a few years, but I've done it like three-ish years ago, so. Yeah. For so me, we don't have to repeat it again if you don't want to. No, it's no problem. Um, 
it uh, this is if you're if you ever done an image processing, then uh, this they call a filter. Okay, in AI they call it a convolution. It's just a different name for the same thing. But the difference is that in image processing, um, some uh, smart person decided this. Uh, it's called a kernel. If you wait a second and come back. This is called the, the kernel, right? So these numbers in here are what actually are, you, are a training. When you do the back propagation to adjust your weights, uh, this is what it's adjusting, these, these values in here. Okay, so, um, so here we, it's called a convolution. But if you're used to uh, uh, image processing, then uh, this seems familiar to you. And uh, stride, uh, usually we use stride of one, but sometimes uh, to speed up the um, process, we'll use stride of two. So the output image will be uh, uh, reduced. So this is um, a kind of a way, this is one of those hyperparameters again that can uh, speed up. So in general, you want to um, use a large stride to make it faster, but not so much that, you know, you, that your results suffer. Okay. You just have to try it. And then max pooling uh, is you take a two by two block here and find the max value and output that. So this is a way of uh, reducing the data. And uh, the, the, the good thing about um, max pooling is that if you imagine if you have a, um, a one pixel wide um, line, Okay, if you use a a, um, a blur, you can you usually you think of it like you ca calculate the average of these uh, four um, values. Okay, but the problem with that is that you it, you'll you will kind of uh, blur out uh, fine details or, or sharp edges. Okay, so max pooling will uh, tends to preserve edges better and thin thin the lines. And then padding, sometimes you want to keep uh, um, the same. Uh, yeah, I was going to, we'll go back. Uh, the padding is usually they set it to same. So same means uh, the same, um, it just means the same on the left and right and top and bottom. Okay, so this will uh, force the output the same size as the input. So normally when you uh, apply a uh, max pooling, the result will be, um, or a convolution, uh, it will, the result will be smaller. Sometimes you want to keep the same size. So here was the baseline. Yeah, we saw this. Uh, this is, uh, you see the padding equals same. So um, I think that means uh, the same on the left and right and top and bottom. Okay, so we, everything else should look familiar here. Stochiastic gradient descent. Okay, here is point zero zero one. So we, yeah, uh, I think the default is point zero one. Okay, the, um, zero and one output layer. One node was sigmoid it's because it's a binary classification we talked about before. Okay, so here's the image generator. We talked about the iterator. We need one iterator for the um, training and one for the testing data. So two iterators. And then we can use this flow from directory instead of reading images directly. And we use a batch size 64, okay. Probably 64 is way too big because we, we only have 100. Okay, so we, we can adjust that later. So then we fit number of steps, batch 20 epochs, okay. 
So if everything works right, we should learning curves. Okay. So this is the same uh summarize bit the plot finally plot like feeding curves summarize okay save to file and different um okay so this is the um baseline the one block vgg model came out like this so um we can see uh up until about 12 uh, epochs it did pretty well but then it started overfitting so you see around that 12 epochs here started uh, overfitting. So by the way, I, I think uh, I trained, th th this is a result using all the data. So with with our a little example using only um, uh, one one hundredth of the data, you won't get a good, you won't get the same result. So just remember that this took uh, many hours to compute, okay? So we try a, a bigger model with 64 filters. Okay, so now we have one layer with 32 filters and a max pooling. And then the next layer is 64. Okay. So what does that do? Looks like this. So we see that um, still getting overfitting on the training. In this case, it started overfitting at eight epochs around here. Okay. So this is um, likely the result of increased capacity of the model. So we increased the capacity by adding this uh, convolution layer, right? So this overfitting started sooner. So now we're with a tr three layers, three comments. So here we went, we went 32 to 64 to 128 um, convolutions. Okay, so now the, um, okay, so the performance is going, has been going up we go, went for an hour up to 80%, which is good. This is good. So, so uh, this SVM, this is um, state vector machine. I think this is a uh, an older kind of traditional AI method. I've, I've never actually tried it, but before uh, um, um, deep learning, 80, 82% was, was state of the art to classify cats and dogs. Okay, so we're already doing maybe a 10 or 20 years ago, this, this was, you know, state of the art. But uh, we're still seeing overfitting after about five or six um, epochs. Okay, so to summarize our results so far, we have three different models. So VGG one, two, and three, and um, the uh, what do you call it accuracy went up, which is good. Okay, maybe we can improve the performance by adding more layers. Okay. Well, we like it. Okay, so we need some kind of regularization techniques to improve. So here we said drop out. Um, weight decay. Like I said, some, sometimes the weight values uh, get very large. So we might want to normalize the weight values and uh, data augmentation, which I'll discuss in a moment. Okay, so um, so data augmentation, you think of it like a picture of a cat. Maybe uh, you can, if you shift it to the left and right or up and down a little bit, it's still a cat, right? So uh, we can drop out is very easy to do. We can add drop out layers, uh, which um, drop out just means that you set, you give it a percent like 50% um, or something. So 50% of the values, it will just set to zero. So 
it's kind of the uh, machine gun approach to uh, um, make your network more robust. Okay, so in a between usually between twenty and fifty percent here, you see he adds his uh, dropout layer here. Here's twenty percent, twenty percent, and then a fifty percent. Okay, so this will probably uh, decrease our accuracy, but will reduce the overfitting. Okay, here you see. Um, now uh, we went out to 30 or 40 epochs here before it started overfitting. So this is uh, good in general, even though um, accuracy is still uh, around 80%, more than 80%, this is good. So dropout is a very easy way. Uh, the, first, this is a, the first choice to reduce um, overfitting is dropout. Okay. So it's reduced or delayed the overfitting. So you can see uh, this line is still going up. So the, the um, accuracy is still going up and the loss is still going down. So maybe uh, we should let this run even longer, maybe uh, 100 epochs, we should let it keep going. Also, maybe a more higher dropout rates maybe will uh, improve, maybe uh, delay the uh, overfitting. Okay, so data augmentation. Okay, so um, just means kind of a um, randomly generating new data. Regulation technique. So small shift and the horizontal flips. It's, that's what, so you think like cats and dogs, uh, uh, horizontal, you can say shift makes sense and the horizontal flip, but you, you seldom see a vertical shift. You seldom see a dog standing on its head, right? So, so the thing about uh, augmentation is you want to imagine um, with the data that I have, how can I uh, kind of, uh, um, you know, add a little random, but still be a, a plausible input. You don't want you don't want to generate uh, implausible data because um, that's not going to help. Okay, but uh, you have to be careful. You do not want to augment your test data set. Remember, we held back twenty percent of our original data for a testing. Right, but you do not, in general, uh, augment your test data, which is a, by the way, a mistake that that uh, paper that I was working on we made, and uh, one of the uh, uh, reviewers said, "Oh, why are you augmenting your test data?" And I said, "Oh, I forgot." Okay, so it happens. I, I but think... image image augmentation. Um, so here we, yeah, so this is, this is used as a KEDAS uh, image data generator. Okay, so we're going to use a 10% um, horizontal and vertical shift and random horizontal flips, okay. Also, you can think of like the, the brightness of the pixel values, you can also augment th those. At, uh, so here, if we do all that, then uh, we get this result. So it's, with augmentation, we are able to lift the performance 5% to 85% now, which is looking good. And uh, the model is capable of further learning. So you still, you can see this um, curve is still going up. So beyond 50, we can probably keep going to 100 or more epochs. Okay, so you might, maybe uh, we haven't done rotations or zoom yet. So that's another uh, you can try. 
Um, don't you don't want it to be too much, to, but just a very uh, small amount. The minor rotations and zooms. I, I think it's also possible to add noise, right? Yeah, that which is uh, basically what a dropout is. Dropout is oh, yeah, a true. is um, a method just to add random noise to the. But yeah, there's there there is a whole you know literature of um, you know different kinds of random noise that uh, you can add. But yeah. Okay. The discussion we have uh, discussed three different uh, improvements. So with the data augmentation, we're able to get up 85%, which is not too bad. Okay, so there might be other uh, techniques to reduce overfitting. And uh, if we let it train longer, probably improve. So this is just the beginning. So uh, other things, weight decay and early stopping and a learning rate and then a schedule. There's all kinds of, and Adam I mentioned is, is there's usually uh, we use either Adam or SGD for the optimizer. Okay, so other models and there's all kinds of um, things we can try. Smaller model might be faster to train. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> this is a, an aside here. So my this is my computer that I have, this uh, Epson. And the Lambda computer, this is what I want, computer that I want. So um, this has a four uh, GPUs with um, uh, 23, are 24 gigabytes. So um, um, the core count is important for the speed, but um, if you, especially if you're doing a, a high resolution, like you do want to do super resolution, then uh, you need uh, memory is more important than the number of cores. Okay, and um, and I I. Uh, tested this this computer is not four times faster than this computer this the lambda is about twice as fast as the uh, epson okay so in, in general um, uh, adding uh, you know doubling the capacity is not going to double the speed but it will improve the speed so transfer learning so um Hatest. So this is a. Uh, uh, at first, I, I was kind of. Um, I thought that a real. Uh, a real, uh, you know, researcher would uh, always train from scratch. But I, over the years, I've learned that uh, transfer learning is very uh, um, useful. Okay, so. So you remember this VGG network is a uh, two main parts. You have the uh, feature extractor and then a classifier. So the, the feature extractor has these VG or has these um, convolution blocks. And then uh, the classifier has is called dense or a fully connected layer. So what we're gonna do, we're going to keep the um, feature extractor and we're gonna replace it, the, the classifier. Okay, so how do we do this? So, um, add weights, okay. So we're gonna lo load this VGG16 model from Kedis, and then we're gonna call this include top to false. Okay, so I'll show you, let's see, um, yeah, you can see here, um, this VGG16, model is a predefined in Keras, okay? But we're gonna set this, um, the top layers to uh, not trainable, we'll set trainable to false so that uh, it will 
I'll leave that as saying, but after the flatten layer, we're going to replace uh, the final, uh, the, the, the hidden layer and the dent. You see the final layer now is a uh, one. This used to be a uh, 1000. I think VGG 16 has a 1000 uh, classes of images. Okay, but we only need uh, two. So we use a uh, this kind of binary classification with a sigmoid. Okay, so so only this the only thing that it's going to be trained in now is a, is this a dense layer one hundred twenty eight. So that is a lot lot faster to train. Train, so we train it normally ten. Train. But you have to be careful. Um, before we used a 200 by 200 pixels, but VGG 16 was trained with 224 by 224. So we have to use the same uh, input size that VGG 16 was created or was trained on. So we have to uh, be careful target size. And uh, images are centered, which is, um, doesn't mean this. It doesn't mean the um, vertical and horizontal center, but the pixel values. Um, the GG sixteen um, they they computed the mean pixel values for R, G, and B, and turned out to be this. So um, this is why I'm saying that the, the um, uh, instead of uh, uh, scaling your pixels from zero to one, we're going to scale them so that the mean value is zero. And then the standard deviation will be one. So we have a plus and minus pixel values. And this, these values are what um, were uh, used for a VGG 16. So these are important numbers, but just think of, um, these are just the average RGB values for all the training data that they used. Okay, so it's kind of confusing, but let's see what happens here. So transfer learning, you get a curve like this. Okay, so um, in this case, we can see the model achieved very impressive results with a classification of 97%. Okay, so we've jumped way up, 97%. Um, okay, so you see it, it, after only 10 epochs, we were able to achieve pretty good results. And it shows some uh, overfitting. This looks this looks like a large overfitting, but um, actually the scale the scale is a, a, a very small. So this is actually not uh, too bad. But let's say maybe uh, with some more uh, dropout, we can uh, reduce this um, overfitting. Okay. So how do we, so the final, so for the final, uh, we want to save fitting, load the save model, make prediction later. Okay, so um, let's um, go back to spider here and, um, Okay, we don't have a lot of time, so we're, we've talked about adding um, dropout. We've already covered all these. Um, so the, um, this is the transfer learning. So let's uh, go to a test one here, number eight. And here we're going to, um, we have the sample image should be here. Sample image. Okay, so this is our sample image. So if we input this into our network, you can see dog. Okay, so it guessed dog. Not bad. So you can, uh, uh, if you're Curious, you can uh, 
go on to um, Google and uh, search for my dog. And uh, you go images. You can download an image and you can test for yourself, convince yourself that this is actually working, that it's not some trick. Okay. Then uh, and one more, um, just one test all. Okay. And it misses. Here, this this uh this takes a long time to run, but uh this goes in a loop, and uh like we did before, like we did with numbers, we uh, output all our misses. So if, if you run that, you should have a folder here called the misses. Okay. So here you can see, um, maybe this is kind of severe. You have these kids here. And the brush kind of interfered with the classification. Here, you, you see this a lot when, uh, with a chain or chain fence, the dog is behind. So this is making, uh, you imagine the edge detection is going crazy on all these uh, edges of these dogs in front of the dog. So you have to be careful with uh, fences here. I don't know. This one is so uh, low resolution. It's a very small. This is only a 60 by 39 image here. Okay, we trained for a 224 pixels. All right, so maybe this is a too small input. Here you have both a cat and a dog. So uh, is this a cat or a dog? So this is an example where your uh, training data has a problem. Okay, so this should, this image should actually have been excluded because you cannot determine if this is a cat or a dog. And here's another fence. Here's another cat and a dog. Cat and a dog. This one is interesting. Uh, you <laughs> seldom see a cat on a leash. However, it classified this as a dog, which I'm not sure, but I wonder because it noticed that it's on a leash. <laughs> I don't know. Strange. Cat and a dog. Okay, and this this is actually uh, <laughs> one of the images. So this is another example that you should need to clean up your um, your input data a little bit better. That's all. Okay. So let me see here. Do I have any more prepare? We just have a few more minutes here. The final data, make a prediction. So some things that you might uh, want to try is um, extensions. So regularization. So, um, so if you uh, go through and, and print out your weights, you can you may be able may want to try um, it's called a regularization dropout rates image augmentation we talked about learning rates okay pre-trainment all right so there's others besides VGG sixteen there's other uh, so this uh, graph um, is a comparison. It's kind of old now, but at the time, AlexNet was the first real um, deep uh, network. Okay, we're using VGG16 here, which is a dark green here. So this graph, this graph shows the um, accuracy for uh, test images. So it's not just cats and dogs, but it's uh, maybe cars and trucks and boats and zebras okay but recently uh resnet and inception uh, can do even better and uh, on the right here this the size of this uh graph or size of the circle is how much memory 
it uses. And the uh, x-axis is a speed. So um, I guess uh, uh, on the left, the left is faster, I, I assume. OK. And uh, the y here is the accuracy here. So you can see these, uh, uh, I think Google and uh, Facebook, they've been um, making these. I think ResNet came from a Google, I'm not sure, inception. Anyway, um, if you look at the, um, we included in spider VGG16, where was it? I'm not here. Um, I want to look at the, uh, I think it's uh, this one. Okay, so this is included from Keras applications. So if you plug this into Google here, um, actually, I want to go back one. applications. Let's see. Let me try this. Let me try on this. I just want applications. What are the other applications? Yeah. Okay, so we have a you see exception, ResNet. Okay, so you're not stuck with VGG16. If you want to be really ambitious, you'll try out uh, some of these others. They have lots of them now. And uh, here you see the size, top one accuracy. I wish I could sort this. What's the Which one has the best accuracy? 80, 84? 86, maybe this one down here, XT extra large. <laughs> okay, it gets up to 86%, pretty good. I'm not sure what's the different top one acre. I have to, um... so anyway, this gives you a uh, size. Time CPU, so how long is it on the GPU? Times for inference step. Yeah. Okay, it gives you some idea of the speed. Okay, so this is a table is similar to this gr graph here. Okay, so any questions? Everything ab about cats and dogs you ever wanted to know. So, uh, um, like I say, this maybe you, you're not interested in cats and dogs, but um, for example, if, if you work in a biology lab, you might have um, slides of different kinds of um, cells or uh, sample tissues, tissue slides. Okay, so I would recommend that you use this kind of transfer learning that, um, if you try to uh, train a, a large network from scratch, then you need uh, millions of, of uh, good sample data and a supercomputer. But if you have, especially at medical images, uh, often we only we, we only have like 100 at most uh, uh, images. So uh, in that case, uh, the transfer learning, you, you would think that uh, because a medical image are often black and white, but VGG is a color. It's, it's, it was designed for color images. So when I started, when when I started, uh, I thought, well, VGG is not any won't be any good for medical images because you know it's. But I just from my experimenting, I found that well, even though you you you're it's, it seems like a waste, uh, a medical image we have to make RGB. You have to make an RGB image. This will be exactly the same. 
So you, you would think that uh, there may be a way to, to reduce it to one third, <clears throat> even if you're using VGG, but that it turns out that it's it's not the best method is just to um, use transfer learning. And just, uh, <clears throat> for example, uh, what I did was um, you, you take a radiograph of a left hand and a, or, or a right hand. But um, in the DICOM data, it only they only entered a, a extremity. They didn't say this is a left hand, this is a right hand, right? So so we made trained this uh, network to recognize uh, this is a left hand and right hand. And in that case, I found that transfer learning was was much better than trying to uh, train from scratch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I wanted to say was uh, medical images are often deep bit. Okay. So in, uh, uh, a normal image is, is eight bit. Okay. Especially RGB, you have eight bits, eight bits, eight bits. Medical images are often uh, deep bit. So you might have, say, a, a, a 10 bit. So you, like from zero to 40, 96, the values. Okay. But, but, to feed this into a, into a, uh, a you know pre-existing like VGG, you have to reduce that to eight bits, okay. And also the 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 uh, the size, like I said, you have to uh, resize everything to two twenty four. Okay. If you're really ambitious, you'll train everything from scratch. Use a full resolution at the full bits bit depths. Okay, but I warn you. It's not so easy, okay? So we'll finish. Stop, share. Do you have a question, David? I think right now I'm good. Okay, so uh, tomorrow the class starts uh, later in yeah. the afternoon. So don't show up <laughs> at 8.45, okay? Yep. Okay. Have a good lunch. Thank you. You too. See you tomorrow. Okay.